okay, what I decided to do is to maybe once a month here, give this a shot and give a EMS patient scenario. And my goal is to help you with what your field impression might be on specific patients based on a given amount of information. And also to try to help you when you see these scenarios on exams, uh, how to sort of whittle down some things you might be thinking in your head after reading a scenario, okay? So this scenario today is talking about an elderly female that you get called for. You find her sitting on the commode on the toilet. She's going to tell you that she's got abdominal pain and it's been going on for about the past two hours. Now, when you go to move her to the ambulance stretcher, you know that she's got some dark tarry stools inside the commode. Now, you're also going to find out that she's going to tell you that her, ab that her stomach is hurting worse right after she gets done eating and that her doctor has recently di her, diagnosed her as being anemic. Now, looking at this scenario, okay, um, there might be several things going on in your head that might be going on with this patient. Um, when you look at a patient, or especially on an exam, guys, and you're seeing a scenario like this, before you look at the answers to the question or before you make um, a, a determination in the field, try to answer it in your head first. Try to figure out what's going on first before you commit to anything um, definite, okay, whether it's on the exam or whether it's in, in an actual patient. So some of the things you might think about is maybe the patient's constipated, maybe they've got hemorrhoids, maybe they've got uh, diverticulitis, or they've got a gastric ulcer. Now, how do you throw these things out? Well, think about some of the signs and symptoms of each one of these four things and how that's not really applying in this case, right? Constipation. Usually you're not going to have bleeding and the patient's not going to be anemic or at least the constipation is not going to be causing the patient to be anemic, right? Diverticulitis, you're going to get some bleeding there, right? You can get some bleeding with that, but it's not going to be related to any immediate food intake, right? Right after food, she's not, you're not going to have this any kind of a flare-up after food intake. And hemorrhoids, well... You're not going to have the, the stools won't be dark and tarry. Uh, the pain is, is going to be an acute pain and it's going to be bright red blood. So what are you thinking? Well, more than likely, thinking about what's in this scenario, it's going to most likely be a gastric ulcer. Now, if you look at the four choices that we gave, right, you can get rid of the constipation. You can get rid of the hemorrhoid right off the bat. The diverticulitis you might sort of lean to, again, because there can be bleeding, but the gastric ulcer is what is going on. And the reason why you can think about that is that the patient's got a history of the abdominal pain after eating. That should be your key clue because that's when the acid in the stomach is going to be highest, Okay, so that's going to be your main clue as to why you're leaning towards a gastric ulcer. And then the dark tarry stools and the recent diagnosis of anemia are all indicators of a patient who might have a gastric ulcer. Okay, guys, I hope we can use these Monday minutes. Again, look at all your options, okay? And when you start evaluating a patient like this, whether it's in real life or it's based on a scenario on an exam, think about some of the things you might be leaning towards in your head. And then immediately throw them out. You can immediately throw out things like constipation and hemorrhoids, right? So immediately throw those things out and focus on your questioning and focus on your, uh, your further exam based on what you think it might actually be doing so you can get a much better field impression on your patient. Guys, if you want to really build some knowledge and you really want to go ahead and, and, and add some, some uh, knowledge base to both uh, your, your EMS library and on your day-to-day -day activities, Go check out TurboMedic, guys. This really is an all-in-one resource. It's been proven at any certification level. Go ahead and you can master your EMS career, guys. Master your training. Okay, pass any exam using this, any skill, and advance your EMS career. Go check out TurboMedic. It's at TurboMedic.com. But you can click the Join Now button. It'll take to a special page that'll break down for you exactly what TurboMedic is and what's included as a premium member. So go check it out. Find out how you can put TerraMedic to work for you. Guys, I hope you can use these Monday minutes. Be sure to send me your own 
Monday Minutes over to me at jhoff at emsseo.com. Post some comments below based on this scenario. Let me know if you like these sort of scenario-based uh, videos, and maybe I'll make some more in the future, and uh, maybe I'll break it down, focus on only field impressions or only for exams. So let me know what you like and what you think is more beneficial, and I'll be sure to create some Monday Minutes based on your feedback. Guys, that's it for me. Uh, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and Monday Minutes. Stay safe.